and we move to you. This this explanation uh, will be in Portuguese. So uh, just for you to be uh, as as we have agreed before. Um, bom pessoal, eu não sei quem está aqui que conhece o, o Show Me The Fund. Show Me The Fund .co é uma plataforma que foi criada durante a pandemia e ela faz um levantamento de fundos internacionais e iniciativas internacionais que apoiam a indústria audiovisual e apoiam em diversas formas, né? desde o desenvolvimento de roteiros até a produção, a pós-produção, a distribuição, curtas, séries, longas. Então, para quem não conhece, sugiro fortemente entrar. Na verdade, é uma plataforma que facilita muito a vida. Todo produtor, na verdade, deve ter uma planilha no seu computador, um Excel, onde ele guarda as datas dos fundos, os perfis dos fundos que ele vai aplicar aos projetos. E a Show Me The Fund, na verdade, facilitou um pouco é, esse universo. Eu estou aqui com a, a página aberta e vou mostrar um pouquinho para vocês. Vamos ver se não dá nenhum problema, né, Alessandro? Mais aqui. Espera aí. Share screen. Eu quero share aqui. Então, a gente está aqui. Essa é a plataforma Show Me The Fund, para quem não conhece. É, quando a gente faz um search nos fundos, vocês precisam se logar primeiro, aí fazendo um search. Eu, vi, eu vim aqui e faço um, um search por séries, que é no caso que a gente está focando. E dou um search aqui na, na plataforma. E ela aparece para mim já o resultado de quantas oportunidades foram mapeadas. E aí aqui a gente encontra 27 resultados, a gente pode ir uma por uma, e a gente decidiu para esse encontro aqui do Siri Lab trazer uma das iniciativas que estejam abertas. E no caso, o Short Scripts tem, Short Scripts tem mais de uma iniciativa aberta, é isso que o David vai falar para a gente, porque além de um concurso, o TV Pilot concurso, eles também têm um fundo para curtas e também tem um, um concurso para longos. Então, ele vai explicar um pouquinho. Basicamente, quando a gente entra na plataforma e vê um fundo que está ou uma oportunidade aberta, então, o TV Pilot é até 27 de abril. Is it right, David, is it tomorrow? Actually, tonight. <laughs> tonight? Okay. But then this one is right, right? First, June 1st. Exactly. That's, um, yeah, that's the first, that's the second deadline, June the 1st. But our final deadline is June the 28th. So okay. there's a little bit of time. Okay. Okay. So then you talk about it. So, pessoal, esse aqui, o deadline é hoje à noite. Não sei se alguém já tem material em inglês para mandar, mas a gente pode falar dos outros dois que estão abertos. Aí, cada fundo que vem aqui, a gente tem uma informação e alguns detalhes, e o valor dos fundos, e aí sempre a gente direciona para a página do fundo. Então, aí entra aqui na página do Short Script, e daí é como a pessoa pode, em cada um dos fundos, é esse o caminho que a pessoa faz no Show Me The Fund. Então, para quem não conhece o Show Me The Fund, vale a pena. E agora, and so now, David, we go to Short Scripts and to TV Pilot, and to the funding who is open, but before... Maybe you could introduce yourself and please speak slowly for everybody. It'll be easier. And you could introduce yourself and the platform you created. And so if you could give an, an overview about your job, it would be nice. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, thanks, firstly, for having me. Um, apologies for not speaking Portuguese. I'm one of those Brits who, who is very bad at other languages, but maybe next year, like you say. Um, So I'm I'm based in the US, I'm based in Los Angeles, but I set up short scripts in London. Um, and my background is in production and screenwriting as well. And I was working in script development in London at a production company. And it started, short, short started quite organically where I would have friends and friends of friends who would send through screenplays and really talented writers but it was always a struggle to get their work to producers and to managers and agents and there's always that i guess they say that the catch-22 of a lot of the time you need to have some sort of credit before someone in the industry will want to read your work but how do you get that credit without having that helping hand to kind of get your work to those people in the first place So I wanted to create something where I could help workers like a middle 
person, you know, someone who can help facilitate finding good work and sending it to the production companies and the producers who are looking for new talent. Because I think, and I'm not sure if it's the same in Brazil, but in the UK and in the US, a lot of people think that actually the, the industry, the film and TV industry aren't looking for new talent, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Everyone wants to find the next, you know, Stranger Things, the, the Duffer Brothers or whoever it may be. But the one thing which they don't have is, is a lot of time to go through hundreds, maybe thousands of screenplays. So we're sure that's what we do. We, you know, over time we've grown from having a few producers and directors and production companies on board to the point now where we have about 250 agents, managers, producers, directors, and production companies who we're all in contact with who are all looking for new talent, all looking for like the next great screenwriter. Um, and a big reason for them to come on board new screenwriters so we do that in in a number of ways we have a contest side so we have a feature contest side we have a tv pilot contest side and then we have a film fund side as well where we finance short films um so we'll put money into producing two short films per year but to start with the tv pilot side because obviously that's on on the website um how we work that and how we work our other contests is that our writers can submit a TV pilot script in and we break it into two categories, a half an hour TV pilot and an hour TV pilot. Um, so we have two sets of awards and we judge them sort of on those categories. And what we'll do is once the contest closes, so the TV pilot, I think is the 20, what did we say, the 28th of June, we have um, script readers who are based all over the world who will read those screenplays and then we'll narrow them down to we have the quarter finalists, the semi finalists, and then the finalists. And then once we have our finalists of each, the half an hour and one hour, we'll send them on to our judges. And we have judges who have made And their feedback and their kind of judgment will determine the winners of the TV pilot contest. Um, and once we found those winners, we don't just, we have a cash incentive prize as well. So there's 2,500 US dollars for both the half an hour and the hour winner. But like a big part of it is what we want to do is to try and help get the work out there. So we have mentors who come on board who, um, who will help the writers develop their work and, and kind of, you know, make sure that their script is as strong as it can be. So we've got someone from um, AMC who's involved. We've got a showrunner from a TV show as well who are involved. And then we have production companies who will give guaranteed sort of general meetings with the winners and the finalists. And then a big part of it, I don't want to go on for too long, <laughs> but a big part of it is that we have... Um, I guess the big thing for us is that we have a writer development manager. So that person works with our winners and our finalists. They'll get on Zoom calls with them. They'll help develop the writer and their work. And then they liaise with our industry roster. So if there's a, say if there's a, a Brazilian TV drama comedy and that comes through, you know, our writer development person will work with that writer. He'll then go and look at our industry. the right people who are looking for the right projects and then if there's interest we just connect them up by email and let the production company or producer speak with the writer we, we kind of never have any skin in the game any kind of connection to the projects 
Um, and we do that the same way with our feature contest as well. And, and since we've started, we've had over, over 100 writers who we've helped either gain representation with an agent, um, sell their screenplay, option their screenplay. Um, and we've had a few that have gone into production as well. We've just actually had one um, on the feature side, which is just in post-production at the moment, and that's starring Alicia Vikander and Elizabeth Olsen. So that's been a great success story because those writers, it's their first film they've had made and they've got you know a great talent and great sort of cast involved. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's kind of how we work. And I can talk about um, in more detail or the film fund if, if that helps, but yeah. Okay, I have one question regarding the feedback. When you send Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It depends on the judge, it depends on their notes. We, we tell the judges that ideally we would love to send their feedback on to the writers. Um, but it's sometimes it's uh, it depending on the judge, depending on how busy they are, you know, it might only be, you know, we might get a, one judge who only sends through a couple of sentences. We might get another judge who writes a page worth of notes. So, we try and send on the notes as much as we can to the writers if we feel like it's constructive kind of feedback that we, we feel like they can make use of. Sometimes the notes are just like, they're, they're more internal, I suppose, than, than for the writer to see. So it all depends, but um, we try and give as much feedback as we can. And each round, um, a, a script progresses, so to quarterfinalists, semifinalists, finalists, it gets another read. So by the time we find our winners, they've had about five or six reads, you know, so through different people. So we make, we, we like, we ensure. It's, we have had quite a few from South America. We've had some from Brazil who have been shortlisted. I don't think we've had, had a winner from Brazil yet, um, but we've had quite a few on our film fund that have come through from Brazil. Um, and we had a, a winner from Colombia, I believe. So we've had a couple from South America on the film fund that have won, but um, not on the TV side yet, but we've had some finalists and, and we've got some good connections in, in sort of South America as well. But yeah, I mean, that's one thing as well. Everything, because we're, we were a UK and now we're a US based company. One of our things is that everything has to be written in English, which obviously Yeah, we have, so. And do you think, because of course, language it's, it could be a barrier here for us, but if uh, someone has a script in English, uh, it was translated here by a professional, of course, but it's not that perfect, perfect English, but the idea is good. Do you think people should submit anyway, or just if invested in, in very, very high level translation, or if you have an idea? idea about the idea of the, the screenplay and everything and the characters and everything, does it work? Yeah, I mean, it's, it really depends, I guess, on how strong that translation is. You know, the idea, if the idea is strong, um, but the format, like the formatting might be off or some of the translation might not be exactly there, then if the key idea is there and if it's original, and the biggest thing for us is has the writer got a voice? And that's a it's a hard thing to divide like define what that is, but we get it actually more in our TV, I would say, than our feature. We have writers who are writing something which is very personal to them and it's something only they can write. And I I feel like that's what actually really stands a writer out. So if you know if English isn't their first language and they've translated it, but maybe not everything is perfect then that doesn't matter if they've got a strong voice, if what they're saying is really something only 
they can say. It's only really their story. And I think that's what we look for. Um, because we have had we've had winners. We had a winner actually who was from the US, but she had never written a screenplay before. So it wasn't formatted in the final draft or anything, but it was such a strong story that we went back to her when we helped her with the formatting and got it right in a good place because we just knew the dialogue was great. We knew the story and the characters were great. So um, obviously it helps as well as it can be translated. Like, you know, if it can be translated as, as, as kind of closely to the source material as possible, then amazing. But if the story is strong enough, then we will take notice of it. And um, yeah, and we obviously understand that if it's not English isn't the first language, like we understand that and we can help with that if the project stands out. Great, okay. And uh, regarding the, we are going to talk later about the fund, the short film fund, but uh, yet about the TV pilot contest, could you explain regarding the, the fees to apply and timeline? I know it's today, tonight, but anyway, people can be prepared for next edition. So, and also, So in terms of the, the deadlines at the moment, we, we stagger it where we have an early deadline, a regular deadline, and a final deadline. So much like a film festival. Um, and then as we go through each uh, deadline, then the price increases a little bit. So at the moment, we're today at midnight, I think PT Pacific time today is our early deadline, but we've obviously then moved into the, the regular deadline. Um, and in terms of the fees for that, so currently, yeah, we charge a submission fee and it's approximately about 50 US dollars. Um, and that covers everything from, you know, we're not, unfortunately, we're not sponsored by anyone. So everything that comes through in terms of those submission fees go back into uh, running sure. So it's staff fees and the admin and the reader fees and the prizes and everything like that. So, so that's, you know, that's a, approximately what the fee will be, like 50 to $60, depending on, on when someone enters. Um, and then you can also add in additional coverage as well. So we, we can do coverage on someone's script. So we can write um, notes on their screenplay as well, just to help them if they want to develop it further um, and all of that kind of stuff. So, and in terms of entering, we use, and I'm not sure if, you're aware of Coverfly, but we use Coverfly as a submission platform. So people will go onto our website, they'll find the link to enter. That will then take them through to Coverfly, which um, is it basically allows the writers to upload their, their screenplay. Um, and in regards to the information with that, it's you know, name and email and log line and the PDF attachment, and then that's submitted through which then gets sent to us. Um, and then we have our readers who are assigned to different projects. And we have readers who are more specialized in TV or feature or certain genres. So we'll have someone who's interested and knowledgeable about TV pilots who will read that script, then give feedback. Um, and then during each date where we announce our quarter finalists or semi finalists, we'll internally look over all of the scripts, we'll look at the the ratings which the reader has given, and then that will determine which screenplays progress to the next round and which don't. Um, yeah, and when I set it up in the UK, there wasn't, there were, you know, the Nichols Fellowship in the US and uh, Z Zeotrope, Zeotrope, the the um, Francis Ford Coppola one as well in the US. There wasn't so much in the UK, so. I wanted to set something up which kind of yeah it worked that at kind of helping new writers and like I said when I when I did start it it was small and organic and and there was no fee or anything like that but once more and more writers wanted to submit their scripts I needed more people to help me with the reading and then I kind of had to like you know and then obviously with the prizes so it's sort of grown a little bit in terms of having to have that submission fee to, to send through um but yeah, in terms of the prizes, I'm not sure if I went over that, but um, 
year we have obviously for the for the one hour winner they win the, the grand prize they win two thousand five hundred and the same with the half an hour and then yeah the main thing for us is having you know getting the, the scripts out there to people in the industry and setting up meetings and, and helping writers kind of break through and, and just get their first sort of their first job their first paycheck their first whatever it may be so that they can kind of get their careers going um yeah Okay, how how many? What's the average? How many uh, applications you receive? Say, on average, about fifteen hundred on in the TV side per year, um, and we run it for a few months. Uh, I don't know how long. Like Fe February, we open, and June we close. Um, so yeah, we get about fifteen hundred. So it's quite a few, and it's from all over the world. I mean. As we're US based, we do get predominantly, you know, a high percentage, maybe 60% are from the US, but the rest are from around the world, the UK and Australia and the rest of Europe and, and South America and Central America as well. And do you have like uh not sure if you know it, uh, uh the, the profile of the applications, average of age and uh, level of uh in the how how long they are working in the industry or not if they are students or not do you have an, this kind of profile we do we have a um on our website and i can find the link and send it through we have what we call um an annual report so which is like a transparency report which does a breakdown of um our team our readers and um, submissions and a breakdown of ages and everything like that Off the top of my head, I don't know exactly, but I would say from from looking at it previously, a lot of the, the big demographic in terms of our, our writers are from the ages of 25 to about 40. They're kind of the, the highest, they're, they're kind of like that bracket is, is the highest and male to female, it's about, I would say it's about 55% male to 45% female. Um, And yeah, like I said, with nationality, I think around 60% US and then the rest are made up from around the world. Um, but yeah, we do have that on on our website, which has got some more information as well. Also with our um, percentages as well, in terms of you know, when we break down our TV pilot to our quarterfinalists and semifinalists, our quarterfinalists pretty much make up about 10% of this, all of the submissions. And our semi-finalists make up about 5%, and then our finalists make up 1%, and then our winners are like 0.3 or 4% that become the winners. Um, so, so yeah, so once it gets down down to like, you know, the winners and finalists, they are like the, the cream of the crop. They're the, you know, they're the, the best, the best out of a lot of submissions, which is why we have a, a lot of companies that are looking to read. The scripts we send through because they know that we've gone through lots of lots of different scripts lots of different stories from all over the world and and these are like the best ones to send perfect great yeah your your website is very complete i mean all the information is there i remember when i wrote approach as you to 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 have this info session and this conversation i, I remember that i wrote everything is at, at the website but even though we'd like to to talk to you and it's better of course to to have this conversation so if everybody here is want to make any questions please feel free se alguém quiser fazer perguntas pode fazer pelo chat ou eu não sei pessoal do Siri Lab as pessoas podem abrir microfone aqui também ou é só pelo chat pode só para a gente organizar elas levantam a mão e aí a gente chama uma por uma para ninguém atropelar ninguém ok então se alguém quiser levantar a mão também fica à vontade David maybe now we could go to the short film fund Uh, uh, it's all at the website, but the idea is you also could explain. So I saw there that the prize is uh, $50,000, so it is around 75 mil reais. It's for production, I understand. Uh, but if you can give us more explanation, and then we also have a question from Matheus. Okay, go ahead. Yes, so with the film fund, um, we started that in 2016. Uh, I mentioned the first Well, the reason, the reason, one of the main reasons I wanted to, to start that is because beforehand we had a, a short film 
um, a short script competition, uh, which was great. But then, as many people know, the industry aren't really that interested in short scripts because they can't really sell them and uh, you know it doesn't help that much. And we had a winner actually who won our short script contest, a guy called Ben Cleary, who went on and used the, the financing, the, the prize money from the contest to finance his short film Stutterer, which then went on to win the Oscar for Best Live Action Short. So after that, I was like, it makes so, so much more sense for us to Um, and we've got a great short film fund manager called Julia, who's a filmmaker as well. And she's she's amazing and, and kind of works with our, our winners and finalists. Um, but with that, we award fifteen thousand dollars to each winner, uh, which is which is a cash prize. But also on top of that, which kind of helps a bunch is that Ari um, have come on board as a sponsor. So Ari give us free camera equipment for the duration of the shoot. So that helps the production save a lot of money as well. Um, and then we've got other things in, in which kind of we, we have put in place to help the team as well. We've got an amazing producer called Maria Terjan, um, who's twice Oscar nominated producer for short films. Um, and she comes on board as a, a mentor for the winners as well. So she'll get on a Zoom call with them, read their screenplay, give them advice about um, how they can best develop it, if it needs to be developed, how they can get it into a good place to go into production. Um, so that works the same way, similarly to our other TV pilot and feature contest where writers will submit their short screenplay. We also allow um, people to submit for finishing funds as well. So if they have, if they have a, a film which is in post-production, but they haven't got the funds to finish it or they're looking for the funds to finish it then they can submit the screenplay along with a link to the film but for us everything is all dependent on the screenplay like if if the film is good but the screenplay isn't as strong then it won't progress so our whole thing is to look at the script so um, we judge everything on that short screenplay and we do a similar thing where we narrow it down until we find our, our semi-finalists and our winners. And then we also have judges who have won sort of a, a bunch of awards like Oscars and BAFTAs and, and what have you, um, who then review the top projects to help find our winners each year. So once we've found them, we, we work with the writers and we're really open to how they want to proceed with the production of their short film many writers want to direct themselves and we're completely open to that like as first time writer directors because i think there's uh we've had some great projects from from writers who have directed their first film um others have got people who they know and they might already have a production team in place and they're just looking for the money to kind of take it through and that's fine as well and we've also had people who are solely writers and they don't have a director in mind or a producer in mind. And then we, if that's the case, we'll then set them up with a director, we'll find the best director. And as part of our industry roster, we've got a bunch of directors as well who are on board, um, some of whom are looking for short film projects as well. So we'll find, we'll find the right director for the project. Um, yeah, and then once we've got that and once they're kind of ready for production, we obviously transfer the funds to to them and, and their team. They go into production, we connect them up with Ari. Um, and then once they're in post-production, we will help them as much as we can in terms of um, you know, getting deals at uh, editing suites and post-production suites. And also we have um, a great, another mentor on board who's great called Kimberly Browning, who's, she's a short film programmer at uh, Tribeca and she works with the filmmakers after they finish the film on festival strategy. So she'll talk to them 
about which festivals are best suited to send the script to uh, their, their finished film to. Because that's something we're very conscious of is that there's certain festivals which are better suited to projects than others. And you can send it to hundreds of festivals, but it costs so much money that it's it's better to have like a real strategy of how you're going to do it and what companies you like, what festivals are going to be looking for the types of projects that, that um, the sorts of films and stories that you're telling. And having her on board is, is great as well with being able to kind of get these ins to some of the festivals and get them to take some real notice of the projects. Um, so yeah, we had our last winner um, just played at Sundance um, which was great and yeah we've had we, we've had like our shorts now I think we've made about 19 or so and they've they played all over the place like Tribeca and Sundance and uh, South by and like London yeah and, and big festivals all over the world um, which has been great and we filmed all over the world as well it's completely open to writers and filmmakers from all over so yeah, we filmed in, in South America and we filmed in South Africa and Australia and Europe and the US. So in Korea as well, um, we had a, a story about a family um, trying to escape from North to South Korea, which was a really interesting story. So yeah, it's it's been really, in, it's a really interesting fund with lots of diverse characters and stories and, and people who we've kind of helped and a good thing from it is that afterwards as well, many of many of those writers who have also directed have gone on to write on different shows. So there's a show in the UK called Sex Education. We had someone who's moved on to that. We had someone who, um, Daisy Jones and the Six, which was like a, uh, a 70s kind of music show in the US, someone who went on to write for that. And so we've had a lot of our film fund winners go on to write and direct for Netflix and Amazon and, and lots of different streamers and different companies, which has been which has been amazing just to kind of see where they've gone from from the shorts and how those shorts have helped them kind of move on to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. And normally when they they apply for the film fund, uh is it a profile again? Is it the first short film they write or the second short film? Normally, is it uh, beginners, emergent uh, writers, or could be someone who has read, written more than two or three shorts, for example? Yeah, it can be. It can be anyone. So it can anyone. Be it's like their first short film. It can be someone who's made a feature and wants to do a short film. Um, we're obviously all about supporting new talent. So we do have, and I need to double check what it is, but we do have a clause where for all of our contests and our fund that the writer can't have made more than I think 30 or $40,000 as a screenwriter in the last three or four years. So it, it's trying to find writers who are relatively new, who are talented, who are new, like relatively new, but who aren't, you know, they're not really, really established yet. So they're people who still need that fund, that need that money to be able to make their projects. And they're not, you know, they're not someone who's already getting money to make features or whatever it is. There's still people who are trying to kind of get their work out there. So we do have a clause where, yeah, the writers can only have made a certain amount of money, which I need to check, but I think it's like 30 or 40,000 US dollars over the course of like two or three years or something. So okay, they paid okay. for and and then unable to enter. No, we are going to 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 help to spread the news about the film fund. Brazil is a country who that produces a lot of short films and very very good ones. We are really happy. There are two Brazilian short films on the next Cannes Film Festival in May. So okay. one it, it's in the main competitive, and the other ones in, in Semana da Crítica that I don't know how to say in English or in French, but you know what it is. <laughs> Um, so we are very, I mean, there is a traditional here in producing and writing. It's a way of people to to try new things and new uh, languages of producing and, and making films. So it's very good. So I think now we could go to some questions. We have Mateus first and then Luisa. Hi, Mateus. Hola, Mateus. Sua vez. Então, pergunta que eu tenho seria 
como saber se o roteiro que a gente tem é mais pro apropriado para o Brasil ou para outro país do exterior? Como a gente consegue analisar bem se o tema do nosso roteiro se encaixa mais aqui ou em outro país? E se tiver que, de repente, mostrar para outro país, quais tipos de festivais ou sites dá para escrever esse roteiro, além desse que foi mostrado aqui? Ok. So, David, he, Matheus is asking uh, how a writer could know. So, that's that's a good question for your life as a producer and writer and everything. Uh, could know if uh, his or her short film works better in Brazil, it's more local content, or if it works, it will work internationally in other countries, could be in the US or in other countries. Is there any way to find out if your film is very local, is Brazilian? or could travel? And it's a first question. And then the second one is asking about other initiatives like the TV contest that you mentioned and other, other funds and like that, if you can name it others. Okay. Um, so firstly, I would say it's all about the story. It's all about the characters. I think, you know, we, no matter where we're from, right, we're all connected. We all kind of have those human stories and we all connect to different emotions and and what have you. So I think if it's a story that is personal to you, and if it's something which is important to, to you, and it's a small town story, or it's a big city story, or whatever it is, I wouldn't say it matters where it's based. I feel like you would, as you start to work on your story, your screenplay, you'll know where, where it's best suited. And I wouldn't, I'd be wary of trying to change something to be like, Or this should be US based because that's maybe where there's a bigger market or that's maybe where people want to see or whatever it is. I think if I'm understanding the, uh, the question correctly, I would say that you you write what feels right to you. So you write the story which feels most personal to you, most connected to you, mm. and that will that will connect with an audience no matter where that audience are. Like so I wouldn't look at Say, like look at deciding whether you need to move a story to a different location from where it is because maybe it's too small a place or, or it doesn't feel like there's a market for it. I think there will be if the story is strong enough and what you're trying to say is strong enough, it will connect with people. And I think it will actually be stronger because of that, because that's what makes you unique where you're from. Um, the stories and personal stories that, and experiences that happen to you. I think that's what people crave when they go to the cinema or they watch more more likely watch stuff streaming at home now. They want to see a new world and but they'll still be connected to these human stories. So um, yeah, with that, I think as you progress with developing the story you'll know where it feels right to set it and I wouldn't try and force any anything to try and move it to somewhere where it doesn't feel natural um yeah so with that that's if that answers the question <laughs> um yeah then, yeah the second one about other initiatives you you mentioned before but if you can go on on that again yeah so we have the we have the feature contest so that's just purely for feature films uh feature film scripts So we have that side of it so people can send in their screenplays for that and that works the same way as the feature um as the tv pilot and the film fund where we we narrow those down um and we will find the best projects good thing with that which is slightly different to the tv and the film fund is that we have a a u.s production company called showdown who will um, to a paid op, they've done a guaranteed paid option of a project that comes through. So obviously that project will need to be suited to them on what they're looking for. But that's one of the prizes. It's like this guaranteed paid option and development with them as a production company, which is great because they've worked with Blumhouse and a bunch of different companies um, in the US. But on top of that, in terms of the prizes for the feature, there's um, five thousand dollars is the main prize, and then there's mon monetary prizes for for the second and third place. But on top of that, we also have mentors. So we've got um, writers who last year we had the Roberto Benton Fegner, I think his surname.
do work with our winners and finalists. We also had guaranteed meetings with that. Um, so we've got the featured contest and then we've got the, the TV pilot contest and then the film fund as well. So they're the ones which, are, which we have at Shore at the moment. Great. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Louisa? Hi, hello. Hi. Um, Dave, I have, a, I think, a quick question. I was browsing to the Euro website and I didn't see anything in animation. So I was, I was wondering if, if it's exclusive for live action or is something that just hasn't happened yet and you'd be open for it. Uh, I think it's just, just that. <laughs> No, we have we are open to animation so people can submit animation projects to to any the feature the tv and the film fund we've had a feature script which was an animation that one um i think it was a german writer and that was three or four years ago and we've had a bunch of on our in our short film fund who have got through as a finalist but no they haven't we haven't had in the film fund a winner animation project yet because um, we don't get loads of them, but we're completely open to them and we judge them the same as, as any other script that comes through. So, yeah, absolutely open open to those projects. Okay, thank you. Not sure if, if we have more questions. Pessoal, se alguém tiver mais pergunta, ou para o Dave, ou para mim, sobre o Show Me The Fund. Quem não conheceu o Show Me The Fund, por favor, também pode acessar lá a nossa newsletter para receber. Não. Acho que acho que vale uma primeiro uma explicação aí sobre o Show Me The Fund, né? E eu gostaria de destacar aqui também, né, que nós temos nós criamos aqui alguns concursos, inclusive de pilotos, e que a gente encontra alguns paralelos, né, na experiência do Dave, porque a experiência de você apresentar o projeto e ter o um contato que possa viabilizar é mais importante que um prêmio em dinheiro, né, é, e o, o roteirista, ele fica, às vezes, carente, né, de receber um reconhecimento, porque ele está no elo mais frágil dentro da cadeia do audiovisual, então essas iniciativas, elas são muito, muito importantes. É, eu, eu, e aí eu gostaria que você explicasse um pouquinho como é que tá, como é que as pessoas conseguem encontrar a iniciativa do Dave no Show the Fund e outras também no decorrer do ano. Ok. Uh, David, what Gustavo mentioned is that uh, Siri Lab also worked with some contests, the pilot contest and uh, screenplay contest, and he, he sees some similarities between what you do and what they have done also. And uh, what he said, what you said, that sometimes it's much better. Uh, it's not only the money, the prize in money, but it's, it's the feedback and the mentorship and also the connection with the industry, what's a uh, high level, a uh, high value for people here. And, and mainly for writers who normally are like not so involved in the in the production in the industry here, so it's very good to have it make, focus on on writers. So yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, when I set it up, because I I'm a writer as well, and I kind of know how we're that strange thing of writers being way down the food chain in terms of importance but the writers are the ones who create the story so it, it never made much sense to me um but i was i was aware when i set it up that it, it needed to be something where the monetary the money prizes are secondary to exposure for the writers and the most important thing is that they get their work seen by people in the industry because you know if they win a few thousand dollars like but there's no outreach to the industry then like fine, it helps them continue writing for a little bit, but it doesn't help their career. So for me, it was like, we have to set something up where we have these ins to the industry, where we can get these scripts to people. So we can actively you know, help writers find an agent or help writers option or sell their work and have meetings because we've got a lot of talented writers out there who it's a lonely experience, right? You're sat at home and you're writing and they don't really, they're not really connected to the industry or they don't really, you know, they're not really involved too much in the film industry and, and just kind of sending something in and winning a prize doesn't really help. So it's, it's all of, for us, it's all about educating the writers with our writer development manager who just talks to them 
about their projects, talks to them about what to expect when they go into meetings, because that's mm -hmm. another thing. Um, when you go into meetings with people as a writer, to know what to go, to know what to expect. Is it a general meeting? Is it something more specific about your project? It's all of these things which, until a writer experiences it, they don't really know how to kind of, you know, how it's going to play out. So, and also with the, you know, the options and contracts, we're always there to help if, if someone sends through, a, you know, an option to a writer and they don't know whether it's a good deal or whether they need to be put in touch with a lawyer to check it out. You know, so we're always kind of there to support the writers who come through Shaw just to not only learn more about their craft, but to learn more about the business side of things because that's, yeah, that's equally as important really. Um, yeah. Great. In terms of business uh, side, uh, Gustavo, I'm going to talk about the showing the fund at the end, again, the platform. But once we have Dave here and he's so in the heart of the screenplay industry, US and UK, uh, if you could give us some tips, because it's it's a really hard industry for people who is uh, starting in the industry, starting to write or to, to sell their projects and to pitch. And it's very hard to access the right people. And I would say it. It's a lot of uh, knocking the door and no answers. So not sure how it is. It works in US, in the UK, here in Brazil. I mean, it, it, it's hard. So mm -hmm. any tips or advice that you can share with with us here with people? I mean, like not give up, you know. So yeah, no, it's definitely tricky. And um, in the US, there's more stuff getting made in the US than the UK. The difference is in terms of that is in the UK. There's a there's government bodies that put money into films and short films. And maybe they're the same in Brazil or not, I'm not sure, but um, there's not in the US. But yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely a hard industry. And writers are gonna hear more no's than they are yeses. Um, and that's just the reality of it. I mean, there's I guess there's there's lots to kind of to say. I would firstly on the on the craft side of it, I would make sure that you know how to format a screenplay. You know how to use Final Draft or, or Caltex or whatever it is that you're using. Because if you get your script to someone in the industry, first impressions are the most important thing. And if someone doesn't know how to actually, haven't spent the time to learn how to like correctly format a screenplay, then it's not going to put them in a good position from the beginning. So that's from that to making a screenplay easy to read and in, in terms of that if you think that as it's firstly when you get a script to someone it's mostly going to be read by a script reader before it then goes up the food chain to a producer or production manager or whoever or someone in development and they have to read so many scripts a day or per week so the easier a script to read is the better and i mean the more white space on the page the, the better it is. So you, you don't want huge, long paragraphs, chunky text where it feels hard to read. So that's that's something which is definitely important. The easier it is to read, the better. And in terms of the story and in terms of writers, it's looking at, never really looking at the market. I, I think that's not a good thing to do. I think you want to look to see what story resonates with you, what you want to say, how that's personal to you, um, that's going to lead to you creating the best screenplay, the best story possible, like how it's going to be as personal to you as it can be. Um, I think I would I would recommend that as opposed to trying to chase certain genres of like, oh, this does better, or this does better. It's like writing the story you want to tell because it's going to take you a long time to write it. It's going to take it's going to take some time to write. So you need to love what you're writing, otherwise you will get fed up, and you you might do a first draft but not get through the second or third draft. So finding something which really connects to you, um, the more personal, the better. I always feel like in a way, it's like there's a Tarantino quote where it's like you should feel embarrassed to send your script out because it's so personal. And I think that's a that's an interesting thing because. That means that there's got real heart in it. It means that you really put in something of yourself in there. And I think like that's what is gonna make you stand out. 
Um, so on the craft side, I would say that I would say, yeah, you, you, you can't just send stuff out to info at emails or to even to contests and just wait and rely on that. You need to be proactive in getting your work out there. And if you're a writer and you want to direct, then grab a camera and shoot something for really cheap and just kind of keep, there's so many filmmakers who have made lots of short films for no money. A lot of them are terrible, but they just get better with like they, the more they do them, the better they get, the more notice they get. They put it on YouTube or Vimeo or whatever, and you get some attention from that. And if you are a writer who's not a director, try and find a team of people who are aligned with you in terms of your tastes and your sensibilities and, you know, find a director, find a producer and start trying to make your own stuff as well as writing your feature scripts or TV pilots. Because if you just write scripts and send it out there, you might make it, you might break through, but it's going to be really difficult. You need to kind of try and get your own stuff made and try and get some notice that way, whether it's sketch comedy, whether it's like little web episodes on YouTube, whatever it is, I think all of that stuff really helps. Um, and in terms of, of career and, and actually trying to balance being a writer and actually paying the bills and all of that, I would say if there's a way, and this is easier than some, for some people, depending on where you're based, but if there's a way that you can have some sort of career which is aligned to the industry, then that's great. If you can be a reader, if you can work in development, if you work in a production company doing something, then amazing. Um, yeah, it's it's also, and I'm, I was guilty of this, I'm sure a lot of people were guilty of this, is that it can become quite obsessive and you can just be sat in your room writing for hour on end and you need to step away and live life because that's where all of your experiences and everything comes from as well. So that's equally as important just to, to not just fixate just on writing. You need to actually kind of have a life outside of that so that you've got something interesting to write about. Um, and yeah, just don't give up. <laughs> like, and then, yeah. Sorry, it's like okay. Yeah. Okay, Dave. I really appreciate, Dave, all the, the tips and your participation. I, I'll be here for more, some minutes, 10 minutes, talking about the platform and it will be in Portuguese. So you feel totally free if you want to stay with us or if you want to leave. Uh, but I will change to, to Portuguese now just to explain about it. And I really want to thank you for your time and also to congratulate you for the initiative of Short Scripts and for all the, the, the contests and the fund. And to say that you can have and show me the fund a partner to spread the news. And be aware now you will receive a lot of Brazilian applications. Yeah, no, well, thanks so much for having me again. Um, and I'll, I'll stay on the call. But um, yeah, and if anyone ever wants to send any questions or whatever, you can always email me, which is dave at shorescripts.com. But yeah, check check us out. And, and yeah, thanks again for having me. Ok, thank you very much. Right. Pessoal, eu vou ficar aqui agora no português um pouquinho. É, quem tiver alguma dúvida específica, o Gustavo mencionou para a gente falar um pouquinho sobre o Show the Fund. Eu peço desculpas, eu vi que alguém escreveu aqui no chat sobre tradução. A gente realmente não previu tradução para esse encontro. É, eu acho que quem puder, a gente vai tentar, né, Gustavo, é, disponibilizar essa gravação, vamos ver se vai dar certo. É, aí a gente coloca na... Estou aqui para gravar depois de muito esforço, funcionou. Aí tem que ver o resultado do que saiu. Tem que saiu. ver o resultado, é. Se ele vai depois dar na, na nuvem lá, se vai dar a gravação. Se der a gravação, a gente vai colocar isso na plataforma do Show Me The Fund. É, no site do Show Me The Fund tem várias outras gravações que nós fizemos com outros fundos e com outras iniciativas. Essa foi a primeira voltada para curtas e para séries e para pilotos de séries. Todas as outras são, eram mais direcionadas para longas. Mas eu acho que é válido muito do que o David falou sobre persistência, sobre participar da indústria, sobre estar ligado na, nas produções e nos, nos roteiros, sobre leitura, sobre sair para a rua, viver a vida. E é isso que te vai dar para escrever. Muitas outras pessoas falaram nas outras palestras que a gente fez do Show Me The Fund também. É, então, eu acho que é isso. Eu mostrei aqui no comecinho a plataforma, não sei se eu, acho que não precisamos mostrar de novo. Temos alguma dúvida específica sobre o Show Me The Fund? Ou, Gustavo, você quer falar algo? Não, se você, quis, se você quiser mostrar de novo, a gente mostra aqui rapidinho, só para quem entrou depois, né? Porque a gente 
Ah, tá bom, teve gente chegando depois. Espera aí que eu vou colocar aqui, então. Eu mostrei um pouco a... Que as histórias é, dos criadores são sempre as mesmas, né? São os mesmos desafios, as coisas que batem aqui são... Estão no mesmo lugar, né? E pode ser no Brasil, pode ser nos Estados Unidos, na Inglaterra, no Japão, está todo mundo na mesma. No mesmo é, desafio. ele ainda foi, tentou comparar os Estados Unidos com o Reino Unido, dizendo que Reino Unido e Brasil ainda estão mais parecidos porque tem um investimento de governo, né? O que de fato é uma, é uma verdade. Ao mesmo tempo, lá, em termos de formação e de, do calor da indústria, né? É muito forte, né? Uhum. É, bom, então eu vou mostrar aqui um pouquinho, né, essa é a plataforma, então a gente entra, não sei se tem pessoas que já tem login na plataforma ou não, mas a gente chega por aqui, ela é uma iniciativa mantida pelo Projeto Paradiso, hoje a gente tem uma pessoa da equipe que é focada em atualizar esses fundos, em buscar novos fundos, é uma parceria que foi feita com a Latam Cinema, que é uma, um veículo de imprensa sediado no Uruguai, mas que escreve sobre... É, o mundo, né, cinema mundial e audiovisual mundial, então também quem não conhece a Latam Cinema, sugiro entrar na página, tem aqui sobre os parceiros em algum lugar, deixa eu ver se tem o logo da Latam para vocês conhecerem aqui também, não, eu estou no mapa de fundos. É, aí dentro da plataforma do Show Me The Fund, a gente tem isso que a gente chama de mapa de fundos, então você vem aqui e faz uma pesquisa, a gente também teve uma polêmica aqui dentro, internamente, com os parceiros, pensando, puxa, fazemos tudo em português ou em inglês, os fundos são internacionais, a gente entendeu que o, o idioma é, inglês era, quando cada página do fundo que a pessoa vai é em inglês, a gente sabe que, infelizmente, é uma barreira, é um desafio, mas para uma pessoa que quer navegar no mercado internacional, infelizmente, é necessário, então a gente acabou optando por fazer essa plataforma é, em inglês, e aqui as pessoas podem vir pro, porque quem pode aplicar, então se é um diretor, se é um realizador, se é um produtor e a empresa produtora, ou se é um roteirista, né, então a gente, se a gente puser, ah, quero ser é um roteirista que vai aplicar, eu quero que seja séries e short films, e aqui você pode escrever se você quer que esteja em desenvolvimento, em produção, em pós-produção, em distribuição. Ah, e também tem um recorte, eu não quero pagar uma application fee, aqui a gente já restringe bastante, quando é concurso, normalmente tem application fee, uma, uma taxa de inscrição. Então aí a gente faz essa busca, eu venho aqui sempre, tem que colocar no search, para buscar é, essa busca que a gente fez, aí ele vai fazer a nova busca, então para isso, roteirista, séries e short films, a gente encontrou oito resultados, aí aparecem aqui é, os resultados disponíveis, aqui, por exemplo, data estimada que o Inside Out vai abrir o fundo dele, tá? 16 de junho, essa pessoa da nossa equipe tá ali, toda semana ela checa para ver, abriu, não abriu, vai abrir, tem mais alguma informação, e aí sempre clica no fundo e vem a informação do que que é esse fundo, então é esse, lançado no Canadá, é o maior é, LGBTQI Film Festival, o Inside Out, acho que talvez muitas pessoas aqui conheçam, e aí, qual é o foco do fundo? Quanto ele oferece? Então, até 5.500 dólares, é isso? 2.500 dólares, então cada um tem a sua, quem pode aplicar e as explicações. E aí, o que eu mostrei também é que todas essas páginas, a pessoa é direcionada diretamente para o fundo e aqui com detalhes. Will open, então tá certo. Estimated date vai abrir dia 17 de junho. Está uhum. tá confirmado. Ali pelo filme Freeway. É, bem, bem simples, né? Sim, Se a pessoa é, tem a plataforma... intuitivo, não tem... Muito, erro. muito. A gente quis... Vocês estão vendo minha tela ainda ou não? Sim. Então, é, é, então é, é super intuitivo a plataforma, enfim, é super navegável, a gente facilitou um pouco o trabalho, é isso que eu falei no comecinho, né? O trabalho do produtor que já tem que fazer isso, ou né, do, do roteirista que busca oportunidades. É voltada, assim para o mercado internacional, a gente não faz um levantamento de iniciativas no no Brasil, até Gustavo, de repente o Siri Lab pode criar uma, um puxadinho ali da plataforma, pegar todo o concurso ou fundos nacionais. Em termos de fundos internacionais, um que adicionou não há, há muito tempo de séries, né, é o Libermedia, que antigamente era só para Londres, também tem séries, que é um fundo que tem um valor bastante significativo, mas que a pessoa, é para desenvolvimento e a pessoa, esse é latino, então você pode aplicar também, acho que em português, se eu não estou equivocada. É, e aí a pessoa tem que devolver o recurso antes de começar a rodar a série. Mas é um, um recurso para desenvolvimento também bastante utilizado aqui por brasileiros. 
É, então, esse é o geral, assim, para participar do Show Me The Fund, né, para acessar, é, entra na plataforma ali, showmethefund.co, a gente colocou aqui, pede para receber nossas newsletters, também a gente, por exemplo, iniciativas como essa, a gente divulga, encontros com fundos, anualmente também a gente lança uma revista, e aí essa sim é em português e em inglês, falando de fundos e com entrevistas de representantes de fundos, e aí também é uma forma de, de compartilhar muita informação do mercado internacional e financiamento, né? Acho que no final das contas, todo mundo está buscando recurso para poder produzir a sua obra. Uhum. Com certeza. Muito obrigado pela, por, essa, por essa experiência que a gente teve aqui, né, internacional, e por todo o apoio também do Projeto Paradiso, né, que é parceiro de conteúdo da sétima edição do Série Lab Festival, o ano passado também já foi apoiador, este ano é, vocês, além das atividades que promoveram, também disponibilizaram alguns talentos da rede de talentos, né, Paradiso, para o, para o júri do concurso de pilotos, é, e também para as Doctoring Sessions, então, muito obrigado mesmo pelo, pela, pela parceria, a gente faz um esforço muito grande para gerar oportunidades, né, como essas aqui, essa aqui que a gente conheceu hoje, é, com, em reais, não em dólares, <risos> mas, mas o espírito, né, ele está tá na mesma direção. <risos> então, obrigado, obrigado mesmo pela... pela, pela obrigada, Gustavo, muito obrigada. Para nós, do, do Projeto Paradiso, é sempre uma alegria essa parceria, vocês estão de parabéns, estava ontem na Cinemateca, estava lindo... É, consegui ver poucas mesas, mas as que eu vi, parabéns. Vocês estão super de parabéns, você, Maria, que toda a equipe estão fazendo pela indústria. E eu lembro que eu participei de um Siri Leve anos e anos atrás, lá na FAP, ainda é. quando eu, já estou no Paradiso há cinco anos, quando eu trabalhava na Brave, e assim, vocês estão é. super de parabéns, né? a evolução do evento e as discussões que vocês trazem. E para todo mundo que está aqui trabalhando, imagino que a maioria aqui talvez seja roteirista também, desejo muito boa sorte. E quem não conhece também o Projeto Paradiso, também estamos à disposição, pode acessar lá nosso site, assinar nossa newsletter e seguir a gente nas redes sociais. Tá ótimo. Obrigado. Uma... Bom, uma ótima tarde. Se você quiser permanecer com a gente aqui, a gente ainda tem uma mesa, né, que é como negociar posições nas, nas salas de roteiro. Mas se você também tiver algum compromisso e quiser sair, pode... pode... Ah, é com a Mariana Brasil, não é? É com a Mariana Brasil.